Let's practice some CIE, IGCSE, magnetism and electromagnetism questions. I know people do not like this topic, so it's important that once you've watched my theory video, you follow along here and see how we're approaching these questions. A strong electromagnet is used to attract pins. What happens when the current in the coil is halved? So obviously the stronger the current, the stronger the magnet. So if you halve that current, the magnet is going to be attracting fewer pins. So if you look down here, some pins are attracted, but not as many. Makes sense, it's this one, so the answer here is B. The diagram shows a transformer. The input voltage is 240 volts. Got lots of information here to do with the number of turns on the primary and secondary coil. What is the output voltage? You need this equation, which is voltage primary over voltage secondary equals number of turns primary over number of turns secondary. Sub in all your values. And when you do 800 divided by 40, and then 240 divided by that answer, you get a value which is 12 volts. B. A coil carries a current in a magnetic field. The coil experiences a turning effect. Which device uses this effect? So you have a magnetic field, you have a current. So according to Fleming's left-hand rule, your thumb will point in the direction of your force, your turning effect. And remember, we use this in our motors because a motor is something which contains a coil of wire which turns. So the answer here is A. A relay is used to reduce voltages in something like a car engine. A transformer alters output voltage in order to reduce energy losses in the national grid. So it's not that. Question four. A magnet is suspended from a spring so that it can move freely inside a stationary coil. The coil is connected to a sensitive centre zero galvanometer. The magnet repeatedly moves up and down. What does the galvanometer show? So this is not the motor effect. This time you're introducing the force, you're moving the magnet up and down, and those coils are going to cut the magnetic field lines of the magnet, producing an EMF, an electromotive force. So you're actually going to see a reading on your galvanometer, whereby as the magnet moves up and down, that galvanometer reading is going to be constantly changing. A transformer has 50 turns on the primary coil, 100 turns on the secondary coil. An alternating voltage of 25 volts is connected to the primary coil. What is the voltage on the secondary coil? Very similar to what we just did. Once you solve for x, you'll get a value of 50 volts. A wire is placed between the poles of a horseshoe magnet. There is a current in the wire in the direction shown, and this causes a force to act on the wire. Three other arrangements, P, Q, and R, of the wire and magnet set up as shown. Which arrangement or arrangements will cause a force in the same direction as the original arrangement? So, Fleming's left-hand rule. You're going to have to use your hand here. Your left hand, obviously. Your thumb shows the direction of the force. Your index finger or your first finger shows the direction of the magnetic field, which always runs north to south. Your second finger shows the direction of the current. So what you have to do is, on P, Q and R, first of all, draw your magnetic field lines running north to south. Hold your left hand up with your thumb, first finger and second finger at 90 degrees to each other. So you're going to line up your first finger pointing north to south. Your second finger is showing the direction of the current. And then just work out, once you've lined those two up, which way your thumb's pointing. And that will tell you the direction of the force. In this case, your thumb should be pointing upwards, so it can't be that because the force here is acting downwards. In the second example, again, your force is acting upwards. But in R, your thumb should be pointing downwards, which is in the same direction as our original setup. So the answer is R only. What is an advantage of transmitting electricity at high voltage? So that's the role of the step-up transformer to increase the output voltage. I've already mentioned this earlier on, it's to ensure less energy is wasted. An EMF, an electromotive force, is induced across a wire when it moves through the magnetic field between the poles of a magnet. 
which electrical device operates because of this effect. This is the generator effect because it produces voltage, which when connected to a complete circuit produces current. The diagram shows a flat rectangular coil placed between the poles of a magnet. There is a current in the coil that makes it turn in the direction shown in the diagram, which change would make the coil turn in the opposite direction. So you can always add arrows. There's your magnetic field lines running north to south. So the ways in which you could make that coil turn in the opposite direction, well, again, Fleming's left-hand rule will tell you how do you change the direction your thumb is pointing in by swapping the magnets around or by changing the direction of the current. Let's look at the option. Be careful with C. Look, they're going to oppose each other. They're going to cancel each other's effects out. So the answer here is D. Which diagram represents the voltage output of a simple AC generator? You need it showing the positive and negative, so it's going to be B. A current carrying coil in a magnetic field experiences a turning effect. So here's our motor effect again. How can the turning effect be increased? The most obvious things is to increase the current or increase the number of coils. So the answer here is A, increase the number of turns on the coil. A student investigates electromagnetic induction. She has a bar magnet and a coil of wire that is connected to a sensitive ammeter. So this is the generator effect. We're going to be getting an EMF, which movement does not cause a reading on the ammeter. So our magnet's going to be pushed into the coil and back out. The magnetic field lines are going to be cut by the coil. So in order to not get any current reading on that ammeter, you need to ensure that the magnetic field lines aren't being cut. So the answer here is B moving both the magnet and the coil to the left at the same speed. Figure 8.1 shows a bar magnet suspended by a spring over a coil. The coil is connected to a sensitive center zero millivolt meter. The lower end of the magnet is pushed down into the upper end of the coil and held at rest. During the movement, an EMF is induced in the coil. The meter shows a deflection to the right and then returns to zero. You do need to read every word of these questions. Explain why this EMF is induced. Same old, same old. As that magnet is pushed down, the coils of the wire cut the magnetic field lines, which induces the EMF. State what happens to the needle of the meter when the magnet is released from rest and is pulled up by the string. So when it's pushed down, we're told that the meter shows a deflection to the right. So when that magnet is pulled up, it means that the meter will show a deflection to the left. The magnet continues to oscillate up and down, moving in and out of the coil with each oscillation. So obviously this time the needle will move left and right continuously. Figure 8.2 shows the transformer. The primary coil P connected to the 240 volts main supply has 8,000 turns. The secondary coil supplies six volts to the lamp. Calculate the number of turns in the secondary coil. Use this equation sub in the values in the right place and then solve for x the number of turns is 200 the current in the primary coil is 0.05 amps calculate the power input to the transformer so we're using power equals current times voltage our current we've been told is 0.05 amps what's our voltage well, we were told that the input voltage was 240, so our final answer here is 12 watts. 90% of the power input to the transformer is transferred to the lamp. Calculate the current in the lamp. So first of all, we need to find 90% of that power we just calculated to get 10.8 watts. And then we use an alternative equation, which is this one. Voltage primary times current primary equals voltage secondary times current secondary you must remember that this is the same as saying that input power equals the same as output power because, look, power is given by current times voltage, so current times voltage. So we can pop in 10.8 as our VPIP. Our voltage secondary, we were told, was 6 volts. We're after 
the current in the lamp. So divide 10.8 by 6 to get 1.8 amps. Figure 9.1 represents a transformer. Name the process by which a changing current in the primary coil P causes a changing current in the secondary coil S. This is electromagnetic induction. Suggest a material used for the coils. Make sure you're answering the coils as opposed to the core. Explain why this material is used. Copper is a good option here because it's an electrical conductor. The input to the primary coil P is 240 volts. The coil has 8,000 tons of wire. The voltage obtained between terminals A and B is 12 volts. Calculate the number of turns on the secondary coil. Sub in your values. Solve for X. The resistor connected between the terminals A and B is replaced by four 12 volt lamps connected in parallel. The current in each lamp is 1.5 amps. Calculate the current in coil P. Assume that the transformer is 100% efficient. So input power equals output power. We're after the current in coil P, so that's our X value. We know our input voltage is 240. What's our secondary current? Notice how the circuit's been set up. It's in parallel, which means that the voltage is the same everywhere. In order to find the overall current, though, we need to do 1.5 times the number of lamps. So that becomes 6. And then what is our voltage secondary? I just said that the voltage is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit, which is why it's 12. And then do 6 times 12 and then divide by 240 to find x. So our answer is 0 0.3 amps.